Welcome to the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast with your host, Mike Campion. If you are passionate about the cleaning industry, you are in the right place. Love what you hear? Spread the word and tell the cleaning world this is the place to be. Want more? Check out www.growmycleaningcompany.com for free online video trainings, free ebook downloads, free blog posts, and of course, all the podcast episodes. Everything you need to grow your cleaning company is at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. And now, on with the show. Hello, Cleaning Nation. So glad to be with you once again. Remember, if you want to be a guest on the show, if you've got questions for me or you want to hire me to speak at your next event, you can email your produ- our producer, Natalie, at nat at growmycleaningcompany.com or just give us a call, 480-648-5149. Do it right now. We love hearing from you cleaning nation today we are chatting with josh burstein from sawgrass commercial cleaning or so i'm sorry sawgrass cleaning solutions sawgrass has been serving the south florida area with green commercial cleaning for about a year if you want to reach out to josh and his team you get a hold of them at www.sawgrasscleaning.com josh welcome to cleaning nation appreciate it thanks mark so glad to have you on, my friend. Um, so tell me, tell not just me, uh, introduce yourself to Cleaning Nation. Tell us a little bit about you, how you got in the business, and how you ended up here. So my name is Josh. Originally, I started the business when I was working in accounting for a big company out of England, which was located by me. And I just couldn't deal with working in an office anymore. I didn't want that to be the rest of my life. So I wanted to start a business. And I like cleaning, so I wanted to get into commercial cleaning. In the beginning, I did it while I was still working there. And then I realized that I'm never going to be able to grow my business working 40 hours a week at another job. So I quit my job. And since then, I've been growing and business is great. Man, I got to ask you a couple questions because I, having talking to, talking to Cleaning Nation day in, day out, I kind of know where they're at. Uh, and there are a lot of people in that same boat. How long did it take you to go from uh, part-time to be able to feel like you could quit your job and, and do this thing full-time? Well, for, it was about, i say I was at the job for six months while I was doing the business, I used to tell them, oh, I have a doctor's appointment today. I can't come in. I'm doing what I'm really doing the quote. I can't make it this day, whatever. I'm busy with something else and just making excuses because I couldn't be at doing both things at the same time. And then after six months, I mean, I just figured I'll have to make it work, have a little bit of money saved up and just quit my job and go full on with the business. All right. So when you first quit your job, it sounds like you didn't, you hadn't replaced your income yet. You had a little bit of savings. How long or have you yet, uh, now that it's been a little over a year, have you yet replaced the income you had from your job or are you still working towards that? Uh, two months ago. Was the fir- I just started paying myself out of the business. Beautiful. So it, so the first six months you were working the business and the job, that was difficult, not something you enjoyed. You quit your job. It took, uh, it took another three or four months for you to kind of replace your income from your job. And now it's all up. It's all you know, just growth, growth, and growth. Yep. Now everything's going great. Be able to pay myself, finally seeing a return from the business and just ready to grow more. All right. So for those out there, and again, I'm asking you all these because uh, I just know this is, there's a lot of clean nation out there and I can only, as a coach, it's one thing, but people that have been there, done that or are doing it now, that's another. What, uh, what advice would you give? How big of a difference was it when you were able to go full time for you? Uh, it was a big difference. I mean, if I'm working nine to five every day after five, you can't, how are you going to do any quotes? How are you going to go to businesses and market yourself? How are you going to get new accounts? All you can do is go out and clean. So, I mean, the only way to really grow your business is to make yourself available during business hours to get out there and get your, get yourself known in the community. So did the growth for you kind of go up exponentially once you, once you went full time? Oh, without a doubt. I was able to go out and market more, go to more networking events, which is where I got majority of my business from to this point. And it was just, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't have gotten to this point if I still had my job. Okay, and you're probably a heck of a lot happier, no? Oh, t- ten times happier. I, yeah, I believe that. All right, cool. So th- thanks for sharing that. Because again, I, I, the 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 goal of this community is really to kind of share experiences and help people uh, go farther faster. So I think whether you know it or not, you've really encouraged uh, quite a few people today. So that said, I would like to return the favor and give you some help. What's going on in your world that I can help you with today? So uh, I do a lot of door-to-door advertising. I feel like it's one of the best things to do on a budget. You just have to get a couple flyers and printed with a good content on it, go out and just knock on, or not knock on doors, open up doors, go in, talk to the receptionist, give them your information and 
go from there, go to different complexes with 10, 20, 30 businesses in there and just circle around, go multiple times. Don't only go once and just get yourself known. Even if they have a no soliciting sign. I mean, I've never been turned down every time I go in. They always, even if they have somebody currently, they always accept my information, but I just wanted to do something different than what I'm doing. Do something kind of get myself above everybody else, which is why I'm looking into doing presentation folders with content inside that's more appealing to them than just handing them a flyer and walking out the door. All right. Awesome. Th- a, thank you for sharing that. B, that's hard work. I love that you're not afraid to just get out there and be like, hey, there's people that have buildings. I can see the buildings. I'm just going to go talk to them and do what I can do. And it sounds like it's been working for you. Uh, it's working a little bit. I've gotten uh, one, I believe actually only one account from it and I've done quite a bit of it. But in the beginning, I don't think my content that I was giving was too solid and I changed that up a little bit. But I really just, I, I go to my accounts all the time and I see flyers in the trash from people coming in, dropping off their flyers. So everybody's doing it, but you just have to do something above everybody else, which is what I'm looking to do. All right. Well, let's talk about that. Um, first of all, I, I just love what you're doing. That's, that's awesome. So many people talk about stuff and they, they just don't do it. So you're only commercial, correct? Correct. Okay. What's an average monthly account for you? Uh, dollar wise, you're saying? Yeah. Is it 500, a thousand, 5,000? Just so I kind of have an idea. Cause there's a different budget. If your average client's 5,000 a month than 500. Yeah, well, I have a lot of once a week accounts, which is, uh, what I started. And it was, I was having a lot of trouble getting my five day, six day a week accounts. And now I have three multiple day a week accounts. One started as a three day a week last month. It just turned to a seven day a week account. And then I have two other five day a week accounts. Well, actually, let me so uh, let me ask a better question. I'll bet you I get a better answer. What the the places? Because the good news is what your accounts are now isn't as important. And I should have asked a, a, a tighter question as the accounts that you're going to drop off these flyers, right? Because that's what matters. What a, what uh-huh. you know what, what per month? How much dollars do you think that average account that you're dropping off a flyer uh, spends? G- guess I, I, I get. I you don't know exactly. Any anywhere from four hundred to uh, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars, which is really that's my ideal account. I think those are the best margins and the best accounts to go after. All right, so let's say fifteen hundred, and I'm, the first thing I'm going to tell you to do is stop going to the ones that might be three or four hundred dollars a month because it doesn't take any extra. All the stuff I'm going to ask you to do or, or coach you up on it takes the same work whether the client is a fifteen hundred dollar a month client or a five hundred dollar a month client. There's zero extra work. So it's not like, well, it's more work. Mm. No, to sell it, it's exactly the same. And like you said, the 1500 2000 can often actually be easier because you have your team of two. They're in their one account for three hours a night, and that's it. Whereas the one-time, one, once-a-week accounts, you're kind of like, well, who's got to go where? And you got to do – there's a bunch of headaches. So I actually think the, the $2,000 yeah, a month accounts you, you are easier. Keep all, you keep all your equipment at the five-day-week accounts. You don't have to lug things in every night. It's, I think it's a lot easier. Okay. So the first kind of lesson that I, I want to give to Cleaning Nation is this is a active sport, not passive. So that's why I'm, I'm frustrated with the bad question I ask of, hey, what's your average account? That means nothing. You get to choose your average account, right? If you're going to go uh, drop off these flyers, you're not forced by law to drop off some flyers at a $100 a month account and some at 1000 and some at 10000 You can choose the account, right? You can, you can eyeball the building, right? If it's an a 1800 uh, square foot storefront, you know, like a, you know, a cell phone store or something, maybe they're not, I I should have used a cell phone store. They might be five, but you can kind of tell by the, by the building, if there are five, you know, what kind of money there is there. Right. So let's just assume that you're only going to drop these flyers at people that are 1500 a month. Is that fair? Yep. Yeah. Cause you can see how big the building is. You can get an idea of a uh, 7,000 square foot building once a week is not, they're likely going to be a five day a week account with the amount of employees they get there. And you can definitely have a good idea of that. Yeah, you by, you get by traffic, right? A, a lawyer's office is, or a medical office is almost always going to be five days a week. You get a big warehouse; they might be once a month. Like it's it. It's, yep, yeah, exactly. So you, Which I, I I do once a week, but I definitely stay away from the once a month accounts. I don't think it's valuable to go after them. Well, and even the once a week, there's a difference between doing them and marketing to them, right? If they call in and show mm-hmm. up, whether or not you turn them away is up to you. But I'm just saying, let's not waste all this firepower I'm going to give you to, to supercharge your, your marketing efforts. Let's not waste that on the $500 a month accounts. Let's only turn that towards the $2,000 a month accounts. Fair? Yeah, definitely, which is what I'm really trying to go after now at this point. Okay, so $1,500 a month is $18,000 a year. Let's call it $20,000 to make the math easy. Fair? Yep. 
Cool. Um, it, how many years? Well, you just started, but let's say most 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 people can keep an account for gosh, two, three, you know, average account probably two or three years. Let's just say one year. You just get that one year and they quit, which is really conservative. I, I think if you're actually only keeping them a year, you're doing it wrong. But let's say you keep yeah, it a year. If you're doing the work properly, you're going to definitely keep them for more than a year. Oh, but the, well, there's a lot of things that go into it, but yeah, a year is very conservative. I'm trying to make the numbers conservative, not yeah. aggressive. Say you're making a twenty percent profit. That twenty grand times twenty percent is four thousand dollars profit for you, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. If they only stay a year, if they stay longer, that's gravy for you. So what the the problem most people get is like I don't have money to market or I'm not willing to spend money to market. That's a problem. If I came to you and said, "Hey, I will bring you a $20,000 a year account that you'll make $4,000 profit on, but I want 1000 bucks." Is that a deal you take? Uh, consider it, definitely. The right answer is yes. I will take that deal. as long as I'm not lying to you, right? Mm. If, if everything I said, I'll, I will bring you. Oh yeah, if, it, if it's guaranteed, you give me this, and this is your account, then yeah. Okay, cool. So all that to say, if it costs you, and what I'm going to tell you to do is not going to cost you anywhere near this, but if it costs you a thousand dollars to get that account, that's a win. Most people don't get that. They're like, oh my, I could a thousand dollars? Are you insane to get one account? Yep, at the end of the year, you're, prof- you're profitable with that account. Oh my gosh, are you profitable? Now let's really crank it up and say, what if I brought you twenty? You know, that's, that's now you're, you got a million dollar business that not only are you making good cash flow, you're making, you know, four grand a year times 20, that's 80 grand a year. Um, but that's a, that's a business you can sell for a couple hundred thousand bucks. So you're, oh, definitely. So if I, if, if that costs you 20,000 bucks, cause I bring you 20 of those accounts, um, you'd be, you'd be foolish not to take that. So not only is it good yeah. one by one, it's good if you could do a hundred of them, right? If it's scalable, even better. Yeah, that'd be great return. Yeah. So again, I'm not, I'm not saying you should spend a thousand dollars to get an account. I'm just trying to get your head right. Cause a lot of people are like, mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, I, I, I wouldn't spend $200 or a hundred dollars to get an account. I can't help them. Yeah, they you, don't, have to, you have to, you have to spend money to make money. I mean, well, and you don't have to, that's, that's not a, that's not a always, but I forget. I think Jeff Bezos, the owner of, uh, not the owner, but the CEO of Amazon says with one of my favorite quotes, your margin is my opportunity. It, and if you think that through, Amazon, you know, for years weren't profitable, didn't make any money, but they're building a list, they're building an asset, and they would do it for free. They would make no margin because. But now, Amazon's like if you're, they're almost taking over Walmart, right? If you need to buy something, you just go into Amazon, boom, boom, boom. It's here in two days. You don't have to leave your house. So they now kind of own the space of I need to buy a camera, a computer, a filing cabinet, a light bulb, whatever it is, you can get it on Amazon. And they did that by uh, being willing to reinvest in customer acquisition, all of their money. And I'm not saying you should do that, but I just, that concept of reinvesting for customer acquisition is how you build a multi-million dollar business. All right. So enough mm-hmm. of that. Let's talk about now that we've got the mindset of, Hey, it's okay to spend some money to attract a client. Let's talk about what that looks like. First of all, um, the big mistake everybody makes, and I'm not going to call you out, Josh, cause you may or may not be doing it. Probably you're doing it to some degree is they talk about themselves. I got to promise you, I know your client and I'm going to give you a secret. His least favorite subject is you. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. You I bet you get this talk, one right. They want, you want to hear about them. They don't, you don't want them to hear about you. That was my next question. What do you think their favorite subject is, Josh? You, and you nailed they it. They love to talk about themselves. Yes. So if you're going to go in there and talk, and when you drop off paperwork, that's talking, right? You want them to read. And if you're like, hey, here's a bunch of stuff about you, that's not going to end up in the trash. If you say, here's a bunch of stuff about me, that is absolutely going to end up in the trash. Fair? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So you can either talk about them or things that they're interested in. So if you go to a lawyer's office and you say, hey, here's a brochure talking about Speedy Clean and how we're clean and we're fast and we use green products and our people are all vetted and we're, our people are better looking than your people and we, 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 us, 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 right in the trash. If you go in and say, hey, Mr. Lawyer, we talk about how to get more clients through facilities management. See how that, oh, I'm interested in more clients, right? Or how, um, you know, we've done some research on how, uh, what kind of liability there is if your documents aren't properly shredded and we wanted to give you this information. See how that's about them and topics that they're interested in? Yep. Okay. So the first thing is if the message is no good, everything I'm going to share with you going forward is throw it away. Doesn't matter. If the message is, is about you, don't. Just turn off this podcast. Don't listen. None of this will work. But if you get a good message, it's about them and or things that they're interested in, man, will this supercharge it? Because the next problem is if you get them a message that they're interested in, they still have to engage with the message, right? You might bring them something that's like, here's 
you might literally bring them a treasure map where the treasure is, but until you get them to believe that there's a treasure in there or it's interesting to them, it's still going to go in the trash. Fair? Yep. Okay. Let me give you my kind of, there's a couple secret weapons I've got. One I stole and I'd, I'd love to give credit from where I stole, but I can't remember. So whoever the author of this book is, I'm so sorry. I want to give you credit. I just don't remember. He talked about going to businesses and all he would do is leave a candy jar there. He would literally just buy a bunch of jars for, you know, 99 cents each and, you know, big, huge bags of candy. And he would literally just say, can I leave this candy, this jar full of candy with a stack of my business cards and I'll be back next week and every week um, just to refill the business cards or refill the candy. Would that be okay? Very few people, especially receptionists or secretaries that sit behind that desk are going to say, ah, get out of here. Shoot. They're going to go, wait, wait, you just want to leave candy and you're going to come back every month and refill it. What's it cost? Nothing. I, we're a local cleaning business and you're a business and we want to serve you and do things that make you happy. And, um, this is our way of giving back to the community. You don't talk to them about cleaning. You don't talk to them about doing a bit. You don't do nothing. You just show up every week and fill their candy and refill your cards. And I could guarantee you it won't be long before they say, well, would you give us a bid? What do you do? What's, I mean, look at what this is like. We don't even pay you and look what this relationship was like. What, imagine if we were your customer. How good would our lives be then? Does that make sense? Yep. I like that idea. That is one of my secret weapons. The only reason I'm sharing it with you is because I stole it. God bless it. I wish if I can find that book, I'll, uh, I'll put it in the show notes because I want to give credit where credit is due. That is not my idea, but it is effective. That's the first thing. The second thing is it's all about presentation. So that's a little less direct, right? But I promise you, you get 50 clients like that, especially if they're in an area and you either do it yourself or just pay someone to just spend a half a day a, a week just going around to your clients, or maybe it takes a whole day, depending on how spread out uh, they are. And you just refill clients. You just literally you just refill. You put your cards, you smile, you say hi, and you just get to know everybody. And then the magic happens when it's week six and the boss comes by and is like, who's this guy? Oh my gosh, this is Josh. This guy's insane. He comes and gives us, this is the guy with the candy. Oh, and you'll literally be a celebrity after a month. Like everybody will know you because they all come by and eat the candy and use the good stuff, not crappy hard candy. I'm talking chocolates, Kit Kats, the good stuff. Um, that they, I promise they will know you. You don't go in. You don't say, hey, let me tell you about my stuff. You don't do all the other crap that everyone else is doing, and they will know who you are. I promise you. And you'll have, they'll have your card right there, um, and it's a lot of fun, right? There's No one's going to throw you out. No one's going to be rude to you. No one's going to – and if they are, attack with them. If someone won't take free candy, you don't want them as your customer anyway. So that's the first yeah, thing. Exactly. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's strong. Uh, Josh, I'll make you a deal. You go do 100 of those requests – and uh, do it for three months and tell me I went into 100 buildings. 83 of them said yes. Um, it's been a month. Tell me exactly what happened. I'll have you back on the show and we'll do a, we'll do a sequel. Sound like a deal? Let's do it. All right. You got you to do the work and I'll have you back on. That's the deal. Fair? Yep. Fair. Cool. Let me give you one other strategy. Then we'll move on to the lightning round. The other thing is if uh, in addition to that or if you don't want to do that, let me just give you another look is the packaging. And uh, you may, you, you ha you're on the right track with the, the presentation binder for two bucks at Office Depot. I want to kick it up a notch. The way I would do it is I'd FedEx it to them. And again, this only works if you've got a good message and it's a $2,000 a month account. This will not work for residential where it's a $250 a month account, right? It's just too expensive. But you can FedEx yeah. something, and it doesn't have to be soon, right? You, or next day air or UPS. The, the flat folder, UPS does, or not UPS, USPS, the Postal Service, I think you can get it for six bucks or eight bucks. It's not crazy expensive, right? Don't think $40 FedEx because you don't, you're just FedExing it two doors down, right? You're not sending it across the yeah, nation. Yeah. Exactly. But it's got to be in the flat priority mail where they have to pull the tag at the time. You know what I'm saying? The little thin tag you have to pull over. Um, how many of those, Josh, have you gotten in your life that you threw away and didn't open? I've never gotten anything like that. You've never gotten a, 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 a FedEx package? Oh, yeah, of course. I never threw it away. Yeah, I never. You zero. Your open rate that, goes to yeah. literally 100%. Mm -hmm. There's zero, literally zero people are going to take the FedEx thing that you sent them or the USPS, and I'll try and take a picture of it, but it's literally like... You know, yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and there's a little, you pull open the tab and then you pull into the little pouch. There's papers in there. Um, if you do a house close, anything, you know, they fed it's, it's, it's a common thing. And you can get them, like I said, U.S. Postal Service, because you're not worried about getting there quick, right? It can take a week. You don't care about the time. You just want the packaging. You can get it for eight bucks. You don't need to spend 30. Yeah, and if it's local, any, anything you send, even if you do flat rate, whatever, it's, It'll get there in a day if it's local. So Okay, perfect. But just the, the key is the packaging, not the timing is what I'm saying. If they're like, well, yeah. it'll be a little more expensive, but we can get it there. No, I don't get it there next month. I don't care. It doesn't just, matter when it gets there. The packaging is what you care about. Because again, mm -hmm. you will move to a 100. When you hand up those flyers, your problem is you're probably getting a 5 or 10% open rate by the person that's the right person, right? The receptionist might look yep, at it. 100%. 
Yeah, you go, you go from 5% to 100% and it costs you seven bucks. And even if you value your time, well, shit, now you don't even have to go out there, right? Like, how, I don't know yeah. how long it takes especially you to go out there. In, especially in Florida, you're dying going door to door. Yeah, it's, well, yes, yeah, it's, it's hot and it's a mess. So not only do you, um, yeah, not, so that six bucks or eight bucks or whatever the post, postal service is charging for that really saves you time. So it's not like it just, it's an added cost out of nothing. It's you add cost, but you take away money. So they're, you're 100% sure they're going to get the, the offer. The last piece is, then we got to get going because I'm, I'm ranting, is the message has got to be amazing. And the message I would give them is something like, if, if we would like to come, we think we can make your life better through facilities management. We're so confident we can make your life better. If we come out and give you a bid for facilities management and it's not the most creative, even if it doesn't make you smile and, and bring light and joy to your day, we will donate $100 to the charity of your choice. And then just make sure you give an amazing bid where they're like, oh my gosh, this is so cute. And it's got a little gift and it's fun. And just make them smile with your bid, which you want to do anyway. You're never going to have to pay that 100 bucks. No one, I've never had to. Yeah. People, you know. So that's the process I would go with. Either use the candy or so the FedEx. But the FedEx has got to be fancy, like maybe on super card stock and it looks like a guarantee or some sort of certificate or something. And you know, something like we guarantee if, we, if our bid doesn't make, make your whole day or make you smile, um, we'll do $100 uh, charity, you know, $100 to the charity of your choice. And then when you give the bid, and that's a different topic for a different day, Bring some fresh baked cookies or something. And I know you're like, gosh, it's a lot of work. Well, yeah, it's four thousand bucks, right? I just you were at the beginning of the show, we were talking about you give me a thousand bucks. You think I wouldn't bake some cookies for a guy for a thousand bucks? Dang right I would. So save the money yeah. and do it yourself. All right, I've been ranting. We are running way long. Let's turn the tables. Let's do the lightning round. Josh, we're going to go real quick. I'm going to give you three quick questions. I have full confidence you're going to give me three amazing answers. Question number one, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Uh, the best piece of advice I ever received from a business standpoint is yes, pretty simple, but just keep, if, if you fail, just keep going. You're going to make mistakes, but you got to, you have to make mistakes and you learn from them. I'm just putting, keep going. Great advice. Number two, what's the best, the biggest mistake you've made in the cleaning business that we can learn from? Uh, either underbidding and getting an account for too low or overbidding and losing an account. I've lost many accounts from overbidding, which I could have gotten if I bid it right in the beginning of my business, but you learn from your mistakes. Great feedback. Learn how to bid. That's an important part of the business. Last question. What's one idea Cleaning Nation can put into practice today, right now, before their head hits their pillow immediately to improve their lives or their business? Uh, to improve your business, if you're not right now, network. Join a local chamber. If you don't have a lot of money for advertising, do a lot of networking and you'll get business. It takes time, but you'll get business from it. Beautiful. Love it. All right, Josh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing your story, how you got into the business, how you went full time. I appreciate you. I know Clean Nation appreciates you. If you want to check out Josh, Josh's show notes page and discover everything you need to grow your cleaning company, check out growmycleaningcompany.com. Leave your questions, your comments, your rude remarks. I will see you there. Congratulations. You are now 16% smarter. Still can't get enough cleaning goodness? Go to www.growmycleaningcompany.com for more of the good stuff. Ever want to be rich and famous? Owners of cleaning companies as well as industry experts can apply to be featured on the show by emailing our producer Natalie at support at growmycleaningcompany.com. Until then, don't miss out on all the latest cleaning industry loving at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now.